What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be showing you how I'll be taking this wall right here and opening it up to make it look like this. And so to do this, I actually have to install a new beam in the attic. And so I'm gonna walk you through in this video of how I did that. So let's get to that, let's go. Okay, so quick little intro of why I'm doing this. If you've been following along on some of the videos I've been posting recently, you'll notice that I've already completed phase one, which is the bathroom remodel. And this here used to be the old guest bathroom that we're transitioning into our kitchen space. And so this wall must come down to support the new layout. And so this wall that is being demoed is an 11 foot span and the beam that I have um, engineered out for this particular remodel is a 12 foot span. And so here's a little plan of uh, what we're going to be working with. You can see on the left hand side of the load point, that one was completed with phase one with the restroom build. You can see that video um, in my channel if you want to just walk through some of those time lapses of how I did this. But what we're going to be working on in this video is the new load point on the right. And then obviously we'll be installing the new beam in the attic. But this is the layout. Essentially this is going to be part of the new kitchen space. So I want to make sure that I have this installed properly in order to demo the wall. So let's uh, let's go into those steps and then uh, we'll we'll continue on with the rest of the install. And so here are the pieces that I'll be using for the beam. It's going to be two Microlam LVO um, 2.1E pieces that are inch and three quarters by 11 and 7 eighths. And so both of these smacked together will be the new beam. Okay, so here we are in the attic. Here is the area where I'll be installing a new LVO beam. You can kind of see down here, this is going to be the new transfer point down to the bottom. And over on that side we'll do the same thing but first I gotta remove all this insulation so you can't really see it guys but let me show you over here so the beam is gonna span this entire length but then over here if you look I have a 2x4 in there and that's the new load point over on this side that goes straight down to the block and beam underneath the house and so I have to move this stuff out of the way obviously but the point is to transfer the beam all the way over here and then that'll go all the way back over there to that side that'll be fun before I get started, here's my containment, just to make sure that I'm controlling the dust. Obviously, I'm still living in this space. I don't want to have dust everywhere, so make sure you put some containment up if you are planning to do it while you're actually still living in the space. It definitely helps out to control the dust. And uh, here's a little time lapse of me installing the temporary shoring. Um, I spaced the studs out at 25 inches on center. Um, you could do 24, but I wanted to make sure that my ladder was able to fit between the studs just to make sure I have access to get up and reach the high points to demo the wall. Um, so always make sure you plan your spacing into consideration with whatever ladders you do have to get up and down as needed. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to show you the demolition of the drywall, um, but I demoed the drywall so I could understand what I was working with because if you remember from earlier in the video, I need to establish the load bearing point over on this side. And so this is where it's gonna go. I demoed just the doorway length of the wall just so I can install a new load bearing point here. So what I'm doing here is um, since I don't have room to get a long 2x4 in this bay for the new load bearing point, I'm going to uh, drill in a 4x4 to act as my new load bearing point to start off and then I'm going to drive it in with some of these um, 10 inch structural nails and so that'll go straight in and then what I'll do is I'll put a, a flat piece or a small 2 by 4 <clears throat> and then I'll run the long vertical pieces all the way up so let's do that there you go so there it is that's not going nowhere okay so now now that I have my little support here at the bottom complete, I'm gonna start infilling it with some two by fours. And that will be the new post, so let's do that. I'm using a little laser here um, to measure the distance. 
if I use a tape measure, it still works fine. It's just that this has a more accurate dimension and then I'll grow it 3 16 of an inch. That way it has some, um, you know, some, some firmness whenever I put it in place. So this is now, I got 126 and 3 eighths. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase it in size by 3 16 so that way the, the two by fours at the post location, it's gonna have some firmness to it. It's not gonna be like loose or anything. You, the purpose of this post, you want it to be a load bearing point. So therefore you gotta make sure it's, it's secured tightly and there's no loose gaps at the top or the bottom. So let's go ahead and cut these two pieces in place. And then uh, we'll start working above in the attic and getting the beam prepped for, for installation. So let's go on to the next step. Okay, I'm gonna put the first piece in now. I'm gonna first put the bottom and then bring up the top. There you go. That way you can slide it in place. So now I'm gonna just hit it in. So I got the bottom in like that and then let's go ahead and hammer in the top. There you go, look at that. So there's your new post. Now I'm gonna drill it in, sister it into that one. And then, let's screw it in. Let's do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is glue in some strips to make up the difference. And then these will get added on all the way up. I'm gonna put some glue and some brad nails and then and then eventually I'm gonna drill it in from this side. Whoop. And that'll anchor it all in. So let's get going on that. So now I'm getting the second, second piece in. You see, it's not loose or anything. You have to force it in. If you don't force it in, then there's, what's the purpose of even providing a post here? So always make sure you're growing the stud a little bit bigger than the actual dimension. That way it's firm. It's not gonna move. It's not gonna be loose. I'll take this one. There you go, firm. All right, so here we are in the attic and I've already prepped a little bit of the electrical and a little bit of the condensate line to avoid the location of the new beam. Now, if you remember from my old video, I've already installed my post over there. I just completed the post installation over here for the new load bearing points. And so now what I'm doing is I'm prepping the studs. I've already have, I already have my temporary supports below installed and so what i'm doing now is i'm using my laser to transfer the line straight across that way i have a I have a straight line we'll do that we'll we'll mark the line across and then we'll cut it with my with the oscillating tool and then uh we'll bring the beam up and then we'll set the first one and then we'll do the same thing for the next one so let's get going on that They're marked now. Now let's go ahead and uh, I'll run my uh, first my circular saw on top of them, and then I'll do the same thing over here. But that's the first step. I got to remove a couple of these little old electrical lines and uh, straps that are in the way. So let's do that, and then we'll start we'll start prepping the beam for installation. Okay, so here is the update. I have cut all the pockets for the new beam. 
Now what I'm gonna do is bring them in one by one and then I'm gonna set it in place, screw it to one side, add the joist hangers before, and then we'll repeat the same process for the next beam. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so you can see uh, I prepped the joists with some joist hangers. Obviously it's not possible to get them in after the fact unless you use some different type of uh, hangers like some hurricane ties or some other types that can carry loads um, from above. But I figured this was the best part to go ahead and add this. So there it is prepped for, for the beam. Now let's go ahead and put that sucker in. All right, here comes the first piece. There it is. First one. Now what I'm gonna do is screw it first to the studs or the joist, the ceiling joist going that way. That way it's easier, it already gets bite out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing is drive one in here. So I'm using some structural screws, obviously. Simpson Strong Tie, three inch screws for these bad boys. Okay, here we go with number two. Now this one's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to install just because it's the second piece, right, and it's always tighter. There. Just like that. Whoo! There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm gonna start screwing it together. And that's the end of that. There it is. Brand new LVO beam. Now I can start removing the wall below. I just gotta clean up some of the electrical and that is it. Okay, so now that my beam is completely installed up in the attic, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the wall. Um, I can keep these in place until I completely remove it. I just wanted to go ahead and start doing that now. So let's get to that and then, um, and then we'll see how it looks when it's all opened up. This is it, all open now. The wall is completely gone. And there's the LVL beam up there. Got two new load bearing points. That's the one I did for phase one. You can see it goes all the way down. And then there's the other one complete it yesterday. But that's how you get a beam installed. Catch you guys on the next one.